All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I know that we are waiting for a few um, additional folks to trickle in here. So um, just as a little icebreaker, if you all will put in the chat, uh, maybe where you're located today or regularly and what organization you're joining from today. And we'll get started in just a minute. All right, so um, we're going to be talking today about connecting data silos and disseminating important information across your organization. My name is Chelsea Lamego, and I am the co-founder and CEO of FundMiner. And FundMiner is a tool that I was inspired to build while working in higher education advancement myself. I was the assistant vice president for advancement operations for the University of Texas at El Paso for five years. And it was really the complexity of managing uh, thousands of funds across hundreds of people um, and having information scattered across multiple siloed systems that inspired um, me to build this tool. So excited to be sharing that with you all today. Hi there, my name is Alejandro. I'm the co-founder and chief product technology officer at FundMiner. My background is in building and scaling enterprise grade products from zero to millions of users, having worked for industry leading companies, including Microsoft and Meta. I specialize in shipping intelligent experiences that empower entire organizations to achieve more, which is really at the core of what FundMiner is all about. We're excited to tell you about it. So um, as I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about connecting data silos and sharing information across your organization. You'll walk away today with three main takeaways. You will walk away understanding the value and importance of connecting fundraising data silos. We'll share how FundMiner connects data and disseminates information, and also uh, share the new capabilities that you'll be able to unlock once you have your data silos connected. So jumping into the first one here, um, of course, we um, most folks here are working in the advancement and fundraising worlds. And the work that we do in fundraising and advancement is um, really important and really great. But we're often relying on other people in our organization, like program directors, uh, department heads, maybe deans, um, implementers that you are working with who are actually spending the funds and delivering on donor intent. And it's very complex often to manage funds across these types of organizations. You might have dozens or hundreds of fund managers across your organization who are actually spending the money that your organization is raising or your advancement team is raising. And maybe you're managing hundreds or even thousands or, or even tens of thousands of unique current use or endowed restricted funds. Information tends to be scattered across multiple siloed systems and there's a lot of related um, manual processes and reporting involved. Uh, these administrative challenges also tend to cause unused and underutilized funds, which is a big issue when we're talking about raising funds from donors, because um, if donors find out that you're not fully using the funding that they are giving to you, they're gonna be unhappy, you're gonna lose out on future funding and your organization is making less of an impact. However, if you do a great job of managing these funds and you have a really well-run and effective um, operation, it will lead to more fulfilled donors, more dollars raised, and more impact made. So um, FundMiner and our team, we're here to help organizations ensure that they have a effective operation and don't have these um, roadblocks in place with uh, the complexity that we talked about so that they can have a um, efficient operation. Eight out of 10 donors today want to see proof of impact in exchange for their continued support. But of course, you have to use the funds in order to be able to share impact and to ensure that you're fully utilizing all of your funds. You really need the right processes, controls, and data mechanisms in place um, to ensure that all of the people and departments and units that you're coordinating these efforts across have the information that they need to be in effective in their roles and spend that donor funding so that you can share those great stories back with donors and encourage that future support. So it's really important for all fundraising organizations to build a strong donor pyramid. And by um, 
having an effective operation, you're going to do just that. So that's where FundMiner comes in. Our platform simplifies fund management and maximizes impact for fundraising organizations. We really focus on aggregating all of that data from those siloed systems that you're working with. So um, your CRM system might have donor information, information on what gifts those donors are making, as well as contact information that you need to be able to send out um, impact and financial reports. You might also have your fund criteria and restrictions in your CRM system. If you're an educational institution, you might have a student award system that has recipient data related to your different funds that you're managing. Most institutions are also going to have an accounting system. Your accounting system will have your uh, balances and expense information. Um, oftentimes, endowment information is coming from another third party, and maybe that's coming to you in spreadsheets or from a separate system. And there's also a lot of different documentation and, and agreements in the mix. So when you think about um, effective fund management, it often takes information from all these different sources for your fundraising teams, for your fund managers, like your program directors, and for leadership to really understand the whole picture of what's going on with that fund. And when we talk about these different systems that are holding different pieces of important information, there's a lot of them, right? We have a lot of different CRMs. We have a lot of different um, engagement tools, accounting tools. And so FundMiner is really connecting all of your different systems to help you maximize your utilization and impact. Now, before we jump into the next uh, session here, um, we'd love to, in the chat, hear from you all if any of this complexity I'm talking about, um, any of the siloed systems that I'm mentioning, if that all sounds familiar to you all. <laughs> all right. 100%, absolutely. I'm loving the, the gifts there. Number one pain point. Well, uh, we are all in the uh, in the right uh, virtual room. It seems like. Well, thank you, Chelsea. Um, now let's talk a little bit about how we, as Fund Miner, connect and disseminate key information within the with the added goal to also help you understand the different flavors out there on data bridging, so that you can determine what are some good options that apply to your organization's data stack, even if you are considering something like an in-house solution, for example. All right. Now, Chelsea just showed us a beautiful image that portrays just how many different software providers out there and categories exist in the social impact space. That's great uh, from uh, you know having an option uh, standpoint, but this inherent environment uh, creates uh, a lot of con um, complexity. Because of that, we have made a very intentional design decision to have OneMiner be system agnostic allowing us to cater to customers with all kinds of data stacks. The main in which we empower our system agnostic setup is really through the provision of these three different data sync options. It is important to know that any customer that onboards in FundMiner typically chooses any linear combination of these options to account for these uh, data system syncs. Really depends on what they need, right? These three main mechanisms are in-app CSV uploads, automated file drops, and API integrations. Let's go over each of them and dive deep. All right, so first for API integrations. This is a favorite of many. Uh, it can be a great option when customers' data assets are stored in a structured and well-documented manner, or when they use an established software provider like Blackbot, who actively expands and supports the Sky API. We actually have an early adopter who has uh, successfully connected the Razor's Edge fund records to FundMiner. Now, let's talk about our strategy around APIs and data in general. It is important to note that FundMiner does not aim to replace any of the existing sources of truth for our organizations. This is a very intentional decision so that we don't add yet another complexity in an already overloaded data stack. By the way, this design is one that would I would recommend to those organizations who are considering bridging multiple data assets within an in-house solution. Now, as one of the big benefits of not replacing any source of truth is really the ability to have one-way integrations. For us, our integrations enable FundMiner to leverage read-only API access and limit the complexity of adding 
again, another channel for multiple users to edit, uh, delete, replace information, right? So really removing the complexity of your source of truth. We're about bridging uh, existing source of truth, not creating net new ones, right? Now, with our custom built integrations, FoundMiner continuously propagates data to its end users. This offers really a dynamic and up-to-date interface, right? That allows our customers to make key fund management decisions on valid data. This solution will work with any data category, whether it is your general fund records in your CRM, your accounting information, whether that's stored in a actual accounting system or in your uh, uh, Excel spreadsheets, investment data, recipient data, and much more. As long as the third-party software enables such a capability, which is why we love when we hear of uh, future customers uh, when uh, they're on black belt products like Razor's Edge, Financial Edge, uh, BBCRM, BAM, among others, since we know uh, the Sky API availability is there. Going on to the next mechanism, please, Chelsea, uh, automated um, secure file drops. Another major mechanism that ensures data to be out of sync on a desired schedule is uh, SFTP. Secure File Transfer Protocol, of course, is a safe network protocol used for transferring files between a local uh, and a remote system, right? It leverages Secure Shell, so SSH protocol, which means it provides the same level of security and encryption. Now, in Fondminer, we actually set up our customers with their own file drops by doing a full data inventory. Then we define the scope of any data queries that they need. And finally, we write for them the scheduling scripts to automatically push the queries output to the dedicated fund miner server, right? So we really start from the beginning, understanding what are the data assets that you want to um, connect with each other? Uh, what are the, sub, uh, the types of data that you would want to see in your fund miner portal, for example? And from uh, those requirements, from that scope, then we define uh, you know, the actual queries and uh, the cadence of um, how frequent that those queries need, uh, need to be scheduled. Now, before I talk about cadence, the I, I want to talk about the dedicated FundMiner server. This dedicated term is an important one, uh, since in FundMiner, we actually stand up a fully dedicated server for each of the organizations we serve. This helps us deliver on our promise uh, to keep data safe and ensure information is not intermingled across many file drops coming from multiple sources. Now, once a FundMiner dedicated server receives new data, our system triggers an auto refresh where we pull the data and propagate this throughout the portal. Similar to the API integration uh, end result, this enables uh, end users to see up-to-date information on a monthly, weekly, or even daily basis, right? This is where I want to talk about cadence for a second. The cadence of your data sync is a super important aspect to consider and to scope out when connecting data silos, right? especially since competing resources are very limited. This is particularly true when you're developing an in-house solution also. We recommend you to look at your entire set of fields, uh, which ones of them you, do you want to consolidate, and then define a very clear set of use cases or features, think of them as functionalities, that you want to unlock with these fields, right? Once you do this, you'll be able to determine the minimum refresh cadence for each data asset. For example, our customers really value the ability to update their accounting data on a daily basis, as this ensures fund managers and program directors uh, to base their day-to-day -day routine uh, decisions with near real-time balances. That's super important to them. On the same token, many orgs do not seem uh, do not need more than a monthly sync for recipient data, for example, since you know scholarships. If you're uh, a university or any other uh, recipient um, uh, type, are only awarded perhaps a few times a year, so more than monthly uh, might not be needed. With all this, automated file drops is an extremely valuable mechanism in the pursuit to connect data silos. In my opinion mainly due to its versatility. Next one. All right. Lastly, the third mechanism as a standard, we we believe that there should be a mechanism that allows in-app data syncs to, uh, to allow customers to update targeted data at any given time. 
The other benefit this offers, of course, is that this data uploads require no coding experience and can unblock anyone within the organization to update their data in within the phone miner portal. As an added bonus, our in-app upload experience uh, is enhanced with data hygiene insights that allow users to note inconsistencies between overlapping data across multiple systems. Folks, uh, as you're considering connecting data uh, from you know, your CRM, your accounting system, your recipient information, your investment information, uh, one of the things we first hear and that we first note is that there's a lot of inconsistency in what should be seemingly overlapping information. So uh, having data hygiene tools uh, that are uh, able to catch these things uh, before they happen so that, uh, and if they have already happened, give you uh, an, a flag and alerting system to say, hey, your accounting system seems to have the fund name uh, slightly different. Maybe it's abbreviated because some accounting systems have a 25, 35 character limit. Maybe that's a non-issue, uh, but maybe some of these inconsistencies can uh, prove um, uh, like a risky uh, situation down the line. So uh, data hygiene tools uh, are strongly encouraged and is, are something that uh, within FundMiner we like to double down. All right, that's it for three main mechanisms uh, to connect data from multiple systems. Let's talk about the dissemination problem. It is one thing to connect all relevant data into say a SQL database or a centralized full data engineering platform like Snowflakes. It is a whole different thing to ensure the right people can access the right data in a convenient and self-serve manner. The first step in dissemination is constructing a robust access control mechanism, in my opinion. For FundMiner, this means we allow all of our system admins to assign and remove access on multiple levels of the data stack. The most granular access control is on the field level. This allows us to limit a user's ability to see a specific uh, data point. For example, you might want to share all operating account balances to your program directors. However, uh, this will allow them to, of course, uh, understand how much money they have uh, and what are their uh, year-to-date balances or year-to-date expenses. However, you might not want to give them access to the total market value uh, if, say, this hypothetical account is an endowment uh, and uh, that endowment supports the operating account. Seeing you know, a large number in the market value might give them a false signal as far as how much they can spend, uh, which, um, which is of course not the, uh, not the intention here. So field access should really be assigned on a per role basis. And with FundMiner, you can ju do just that with our field level access controls. We also support the removal of access on a section altogether in case you want to hide entire sections on a per user or per user group basis. By the way, uh, within FundMiner, you're also able to create user groups, which work similar to security groups of you know, uh, typical software uh, 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 platform as a service providers, uh, where you're able to create cohorts of uh, individual users uh, that share uh, specific access restrictions. So that's yet another tool in, um, in the toolback that you can leverage. Lastly, our core access control mechanism is on a fund level. Uh, if you go back to the previous, uh, uh, yeah, on a fund level. So when you're logging into FundMiner, the say program director for um, a specific program will only see their 68 funds uh, or their seven funds uh, that are associated to that program. Uh, if you're, for example, a Dean of College of Engineering, you will see the 68 funds that are associated to the College of Engineering. Um, and that should be the default for any access, uh, access mechanism so that they do not see information or funds that are not directly associated to their uh, specific scope. All right. Sounds good. So uh, on dissemination, the automated uh, email service. The last step of the puzzle you should consider is when you have, you know, one already built a data sync system, uh, talking about our three mechanisms way back, uh, and two, you construct a very robust access control mechanism. The third step is to enable multiple channels of communication so that the people that you're trying to help are actually seeing the goodness you have produced. So we all know that there are always, for example, a subset of users within any org that 
do not like to log in to new third party systems and to ensure uh, that uh, we cater to them too. Uh, in FontMiner, we have built a customizable email service that allows admins, admin users to schedule email communications that will present the key components of the platform directly to their inbox. Now, some of the most common forms of communications are current uh, customers um, uh, leverage with FundMiner are listed in this uh, slide. So announcements and messages, pending tasks, upcoming deadlines, roadmap to compliance, even impact reporting requirements. Think of it as if you're part of the fundraising operation and how we call it the end-to-end -end fund management cycle, you should be getting email notifications uh, so that um, there are no long uh, tail bo bottlenecks um, that uh, that really block uh, the progress around fund management, uh, spe especially when you're talking about honoring your donor intent and improving uh, your fund utilization. Now, uh, it is true with all of these, one of the most important aspects for good communication is to enable the right customization capability. So it's one thing to offer uh, all of these services uh, to be sent out over email, but allowing these emails to be customizable, not only on the cadence, but on the content as well, should be a very key thing that enables each organization to say, hey, my dissemination tools are not only great in day one, but they also have the capability to evolve as my uh, needs continue to grow in terms of the communication. This wraps up uh, our overview on how FundMiner connects data and disseminates information across the entire organization. Thank you. All right. So now that you all understand sort of the why behind you, behind why you might want to consider um, connecting your data silos and how we go about doing that, we'll talk a little bit about the new capabilities that you get to unlock by doing this. So going back to uh, the slide for a moment here, we talked about how fund data is scattered across typically at least five different siloed systems. Sometimes that's seven or eight different systems. Um, your CRM system, any awarding system or recipient data that you have, accounting data, endowment data, documents. And it's really only once you connect the pieces of critical information that are stored in these different systems that you start to get additional insights and unlock these new capabilities. So just to give you a couple of examples, um, when we're implementing with customers, we're oftentimes uncovering um, hundreds of funds that the advancement office didn't know um, existed or didn't know were still active on a campus. And that's because you only see this type of insight when you're combining data that's in your CRM system with your accounting system. Um, you might, uh, for example, um, if a fund is maybe at a low or zero balance, as a fundraising team, you would need to know whether that was a current use fund or an endowment to determine whether or not it would need to be potentially closed. Um, another example is you might only be able to uncover unawarded scholarships once you're combining uh, student award data with CRM data and accounting data. Or maybe you uncover an endowment that uh, was never established and you thought that it was. So once you're aggregating all of these different uh, pieces of data together, you really unlock additional insights. And you're unlocking these insights, not just for your fundraising team, but for all of the different groups of users um, that you're working with. So again, this can be useful for all of your program directors, for fund managers, for leadership, and you're unlocking these additional insights and information for all of these different groups. Now, when we talk about some of these new capabilities, we'll talk about FundMiner's uh, three core features. So um, by aggregating this information, you're able to centralize workflow and communication. So here we're talking about um, announcements and messages, all of the different uh, pieces of communication that go out to these different departments and units. A good example of this is making sure everybody knows when they need to make scholarship recommendations or um, making sure folks know when the last date of your fiscal year is when you can accept gifts. Or maybe your office is on a disbursement or reimbursement schedule. And how do you communicate that regularly with all of these different constituents across your organization that you're working with? Task tracking is a big one. A lot of organizations use uh, forms, maybe Google Forms, Microsoft Forms, or even Smartsheet. But with FundMiner, 
Um, you're able to consolidate all of those tasks again into one place and even bring in pieces, fields and pieces of information from these different systems into those forms. Now, um, talking about full cycle fund management. So uh, fund finders bread and butter is tracking utilization and compliance. So once we have our uh, CRM system connected to our accounting system and endowment data and student data, we can start to derive insights and uh, flag funds for your organization. So identifying um, which funds have uh, negative balances, which ones are going unspent, um, any, any endowed funds that might be excessively accumulating endowment distributions, um, maybe flagging unawarded scholarships. So there's a variety of different um, rules or standards that various organizations want to monitor and measure. And FundMiner is able to automate that um, by, again, starting with um, aggregating all of this siloed information. And then lastly, having an integrated plan for stewardship. And so um, again, by having all of this information together, we're able to help organizations produce very visual and in-depth um, reports that share the impact of donor funds. And uh, going back to one of our earlier slides that we went over as well here, um, you can't share impact if you don't use the funds. So it's really important that as fundraising organizations, we are not only honoring donor intent, but delivering on that donor intent and all of our promises and expectations with donors. You'll also be able to share results. So this is um, from one of our uh, clients here. Um, over the years, by implementing a consolidated model like this and having a centralized hub of information, by having um, compliance standards in place that are continuously monitored and tracked, organizations are able to significantly reduce their risks. So in the chart here, what we're looking at is a percentage of funds over the years that went unspent. So they had zero expenditures within a fiscal year period and funds that were excessively accumulating more than two years worth of endowment distributions. So this organization here in 2018 was only using 77% of their funds available. And today, they're using upwards of 95, 97% of those funds. So super important to have that um, all of these processes in place to track the utilization of your funds to make sure that you are honoring donor intent and delivering on that donor intent. Um, now, speaking of donors and the donor experience, um, once you are using all of your funds and you've got all of these great processes and procedures and systems in place, you also can share um, impact back with donors. So here, again, we're showing results from an organization who in 2018 was only able to collect about 75% of reports from faculty and staff and 85% of impact reports from students. Whereas today, with automated systems and processes in place like FundFinder, they are, are collecting and sending 99% of impact reports that are coming from faculty and staff and 95% from students. Um, at the end of the day, this is all um, important because we want our um, donors to have a positive um, and meaningful experience. And when we do a good job of stewarding and using and reporting on their funds, they um, will feel more fulfilled, they will continue giving, and our organization is able to make a bigger impact. So um, thank you all. Um, we'll spend the, the rest of the session on Q&A and would love to um, hear from you all. Um, I also want to mention that uh, you can contact me if you're interested in exploring FundMiner. If you have any product or integration questions, you're welcome to contact, contact Alejandro. And we also are um, have a special offer for the folks that are in this session. We'll uh, rely on our uh, friend Gabby at Blackbaud to help confirm this. But anyone who is attending this session today will qualify for a waived implementation fee. This is a special offer only for folks that are in this session today. Waived implementation fee if you sign up within the next six months. So keep that in mind. Uh, we'd love to hear from you all. And now we will open up the rest of the session for Q&A. Okay, 
it looks like we have a question about why the fund relationship plug in Razor's Edge is no longer available and sunsetted. Um, Alejandro or Gabby, do you all have any insight to that? I do not have any um, any signal from uh, from Blackbot as to what their uh, motivations are for for sun sunsetting that specific one. Sorry to say, but we're more than happy to connect you with uh, some of our friends at uh, Blackbot uh, RE uh, to to help with that decision. Yes, thank you, Darlene, for the question. I will go ahead and submit it directly to the BB Dev Days team inbox, and that way we can um, find who the right person is to answer that specific question um, you might have. Is right. this product different than the data warehouse? Great question, Marisa. Uh, yes. So um, a data warehouse, and we actually love working with um, with customers that already have a data warehouse uh, with uh, centralized information that just removes one of the early um, you know implementation to dos. Uh, but a data warehouse, uh, their main focus is in, of course, connecting uh, key data assets into a centralized location, right? within FundMiner, uh, that is only a means to an end. So we connect uh, data across multiple sources in order to provide the service that we do within FundMiner, which is, of course, the dissemination of data through our access control mechanisms, our compliance program uh, that uh, is completely customizable. We have uh, the most comprehensive compliance library in um, the industry, where you get to pick what are the standards of uh, that are more applicable to you, which is why you hear us say a lot of uh, uh, the aspect of honoring donor intent. Um, this is a core way that uh, that we help facilitate that. We provide impact and financial reporting uh, cap capabilities, um, as well as uh, provide workflow and automation. So we really have a software that uh, that helps the big boulders uh, around fund management. And uh, we believe that there's no way that we can provide an end-to-end -end fund management solution unless we centralize the information. So again, different from a data warehouse that that's the goal. For us, it's just a means to an end. Great question though. Allison. Are you able to connect to cloud-based systems or can you connect to a combination of on-prem and cloud-based uh, solutions? Great question. We uh, can absolutely connect uh, to uh, any combination, any linear combination of cloud-based and on-prem solutions. Uh, this is why um, you know, we have three different mechanisms to, um, to, to connect this uh, data. Um, we typically see, you know, uh, if any cloud-based solution has an active uh, API that is well maintained and well documented, uh, we are all up for uh, going in that direction. But oftentimes uh, that is not the case, and maybe there's some really key uh, data assets that are on-prem uh, and sitting at storage. This is uh, where an SFTP uh, mechanism uh, would uh, would kick in. And again, during implementation. We help the organization uh, actually map out uh, the data inventory. So, so we look at your on-prem storage, for example, and tell you, hey, these are all the fields that you can track in FundMiner. Which ones do you want to track? Um, and then once we get that subset of information, then we help you uh, build this, the queries um, so that you can push that data on the cadence that makes uh, sense to that specific data asset to your dedicated fund miner server. And then from uh, your dedicated fund miner server, we just fetch that information and propagate it throughout the portal. Uh, so we offer full flexibility as far as where uh, the sources of your data come from, uh, all the way from you know, cloud-based uh, solutions to on-prem storage. Any other uh, questions that we can answer for you all? We're happy to answer um, 
any data related questions, any operational related questions. Um, happy to, to answer anything y'all would like. Okay, well, I think we are um, wrapping up just a couple minutes early here. Um, thank you all for joining our session today. Um, we really enjoyed sharing FundMiner with you all. And uh, please do reach out if you'd like to explore our platform or chat with us for anything or have a one on one session. Um, also, just sharing again, we are offering a, a special offer to anyone on this call. So we will um, honor that for the next uh, six months here. And um, thank you all and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, folks. See ya.